going to talk about timing a Gen 4 machine, which would be a square throated machine built 2019 and later. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these three screws out of the needle plate and I like to loosen the rear one. That way we can just swing the needle plate over to the side. We are going to be taking off this hook assembly and installing a new one and walking through the timing process from there. First thing we're going to do is remove the needle. To do that, we're going to use our flat screwdriver, turn that a little bit, remove the needle and set that aside. Second thing, remove the hopping foot. It's easier to time. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I do. Um, some people like to remove the hopping foot. It gets in the uh, way of the eyesight. So we're going to do that today as well to show same screwdriver. We're going to loosen the screw on the side of the hopping foot, turn it lefty loosey as we pull down until that hopping foot gets removed. And then we'll just snug that screw back up just to hold it. What we're going to do is we are going to remove the hook finger. So we're going to show it to you. This is what the hook finger looks like. The one that we're going to install. So with our Phillips screwdriver, we're going to loosen this and remove the hook finger. Move that screw, and pop that hook finger out, and we're going to set that aside. The next thing we're going to do is remove the hook assembly. There are three main screws that we have to loosen to be able to remove that. We have one right here, we have one right here, and we have one right here. To remove the hook assembly, you're going to use two large flat screwdrivers. Very strong. The strongest ones that you can uh, find at a hardware store anyway. Uh, so what we're going to do, the goal is, and I'm going to do this from underneath, I'm going to try to show you from a couple different positions. We're going to get our two screwdrivers in between the hook assembly and the hook coupler. So there is a little bit of a space between the hook assembly itself and the coupler. And from underneath, let's go all the way underneath if you can. Let's see if you can get uh, underneath uh, from the floor. Okay. Oops. So I'm going to get my two screwdrivers in between the back of the hook assembly and the hook coupler. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to twist both my wrists to make that separation a little bit bigger. Some are easier than others. Some are harder than others. Uh, this one feels like it's going to be pretty easy. I'm going to kind of teeter totter the screwdrivers back and forth until the hook assembly is going to pop off and we're going to drop it. When reinstalling the parts during the timing process, the three players on the field are going to be hook assembly, needle, and hook finger. So you'll hear me reference those during the process. Before we replace the hook assembly, we need to buff down any burrs that the previous hook assembly may have made on the hook collar shaft. So we are going to, I'm using Ellie today. I'm going to turn the stitch regulator off by the blue button up on the side. So we have Ellie, Larry, Lenny, and Lucy will be like this. If you have a million Freddie, you will have a uh, panel on the front. You will turn the stitch regulator off and you will lower the stitches. We just want the hook assembly to have a nice steady pace as we uh, file down. So I'm going to turn Ellie on. I'm going to take my flat file and I'm going to hold it up here for about three seconds at a time. One, two, three. I'm going to let go, shut the machine off, grab my replacement hook assembly. And I'm going to wiggle and push. And I also like to just rotate the flywheel a little bit as I get it on there. And I am able to get it all the way on. So that's all I really needed to do on that particular one. You may have to file more than once, but I do like to go about three seconds at a time because it, uh, it goes very quickly from being very tight to very loose. So if you just go in small increments and then test, then you'll be successful. The next player on the field is gonna be the needle. And we are going to loosen the screw here. We need to make sure that it's all the way up inside the needle bar. I like to use a needle nose plier and a magnet, needle aligning magnet. So from where the top of where the needle goes into the needle bar down to where it starts to taper is one eighth of an inch. 
So I will squeeze it with my needle nose and loosen it and then make sure that it's straight. Tighten that screw up and we're good to go. So the final player on the field is gonna be our hook finger. Before we put the hook finger in, we're gonna rotate our flywheel so that the needle comes down into the bobbin basket right there. So that's gonna hold it. And we also know that that's gonna line up. Sometimes you have to push the hook assembly back or forward, um, but this is where it's gonna end up, the needle down there in the basket. We're gonna take our hook finger and from underneath, get it started. For right now, we just need the hook finger to hold the basket in place. We will end up coming back later to readjust how far in or out that it is. Just like that. Something I wanted to point out, when you're first setting that needle depth, after you get everything in place, when you first put the hook assembly on, it's just on there freely. It may be a little hard to move because of those burrs that we had shaved down a little bit, but as you're trying to rotate the flywheel down, the hook assembly is going to want to turn with you. So you're going to have to, with your dominant hand or whatever hand, uh, you're going to rotate the flywheel up and you're holding that hook assembly in place. You're preventing that from moving while you're bringing that needle down into the bobbin basket. Once we have our needle all the way down into the hook assembly, we need to check what the needle depth is. By doing that, we're gonna rotate our flywheel so that the needle is in its absolute lowest possible position. After we have our needle depth set, we're going to take our long handled 316 cabinet tip screwdriver and we are going to find the screw that holds this needle bar in place and we are going to tighten it up and it's going to be super mid tight. Again, I like to brace my hand on the back side of uh, the machine and tighten it as tightly as we can. If you have a Millie or a Freddy, the screw for the needle bar is underneath the front cover. So you're gonna remove the four screws, lift the front cover up. There's a white cable right here that you may need to peel down and the access hole for the Millie and the Freddy is right in here. As the needle's coming back up and that hook point is going to meet the back side of the needle, we need to talk about something called deflection. It's basically how hard the hook point is making contact with the needle as it's coming up. So we want the hook point to just lightly kiss. As, uh, as the needle's coming up, it's gonna come around and just lightly graze the back side of the needle. We want it to make contact, we just don't want it to push uh, or uh, slam the needle out of the way. It's just gonna be a very light, uh, kiss is the best analogy I can come up with as it's uh, as it's passing by. Here I'm showing you that I'm unable to bring the hook assembly forward because we have to move the hook finger out a little bit. In the beginning, we set the hook finger, but we said we were going to come back and adjust it later. So right now the hook assembly is hitting way too high on the scarf and we're unable to pull it forward. So I'm going to do that now. What I'm doing here is I'm just going to come underneath Loosen the screw on the hook finger and pull it back just a hair. And then we're gonna snug it back down lightly. Now that the needle is in its lowest position, we're gonna rotate the flywheel. My left hand's gonna push up. The, hook, the needle's gonna start to come back up and I'm gonna manipulate that hook assembly, that hook point, to make contact with the back side of the needle just below the center line.
After we have our hook assembly in the right place, we're gonna snug up this first screw on the top. What I like to do is push up with my finger to hold the hook assembly, prevent it from moving. And we're gonna snug up that first screw. Then we're gonna take our eye loop. Look again, we're gonna again rotate the flywheel clockwise. The needle's gonna go all the way up, all the way back down again. And then we're gonna look to see if it's still hitting in the same spot that we asked it to before. And it is, I'm gonna rotate the flywheel again. I'm gonna snug up the second screw. We're just snugging, we're not Superman tightening yet. Again, we're gonna look, are we still in the same spot? And we are. So we're gonna rotate the flywheel again and we're gonna snug up the last screw. Just snug, take our eye loop, and we're gonna look again. And we are hitting in the same spot. After the three screws on the hook assembly are snug, we're gonna listen for that deflection. And so on Ellie, Lucy, Lenny, we're gonna make sure the stitch regulator is off and we're gonna lower the stitches. I like to lower them all the way down. I'm gonna engage the machine and then I'm gonna slowly raise the speed. And what we're listening for is a really light tick. Now, after our three screws are snug, we're gonna come back. We're gonna Superman tighten our first screw. I do like to brace myself against the machine. Push down and turn. We're gonna check again. We are still good. We're gonna do the same thing to the second screw. Now this second screw, you can also bear down on this one, the two flat ones that are flush with the hook assembly. You can bear down on that one. We're gonna check again. And we are good. The final screw, the one that's on the flat part, we are gonna tighten that, but we're not gonna Superman tighten it. We're just going to super snug it. This screw is easy to break not fun to remove. So after we have our screws Superman snug, we're gonna check one final time. And we are still in the same position. After all three screws are Superman tight, we're gonna listen for that tick again. Again, stitch regulator off, lower the stitches, engage the machine. and we're listening for that light tick that you can hear. To run Millie and Freddie in manual, you're gonna turn the stitch regulator off and you're gonna lower the stitches. Then you can run Millie. After everything is all tight, we need to go back and we need to reposition our hook finger for a final time. The hook finger goes into the bobbin basket about a third of the way. There has to be a gap between the tip of the hook finger and that half square cutout. So I'm adjusting the hook finger and I want it to go in the bobbin basket. That's too far. So there I have it pushed all the way in. I'm gonna back it out. So just about anywhere from a third to a half. A little grace in there. So we have our screw tight on our hook finger. You can see that there's a gap in between the tip of the hook finger and the bobbin basket. That prevents the bobbin basket from rotating. That's also the same part that the needle goes up and down into. This right here. After we have everything done, we're gonna add our oil. 
We like to put the oil between the bobbin basket and the hook assembly. So we're gonna take our spout, put a drop or two in there. You can rotate the flywheel or just do a couple needle up, needle downs. That gets the oil in between the raceway, between the bobbin basket and the hook assembly itself. We are gonna reinstall our needle plate. Okay. We're gonna reinstall our hopping foot, loosen our screw, push it all the way up, finger tighten it. What I like to do is, again, rotate the flywheel so that it's in its absolute lowest possible position. Center our hopping foot, hold it, and then tighten it from there. Now you have successfully timed your APQS machine. If you have further questions, please call us at 800-426-7233 or email us at service at apqs.com. Ta-da!